after October 7th, there were a number of independent journalists that said that it is most likely, and they had reason to believe that Israel used the Hannibal Directive on October 7th. And for those who don't understand what that means, the Hannibal Directive, that means that Israel, the IDF in particular, would kill their own people to prevent them from being captured. Right. So that's the Hannibal directive. Remember how a lot of those people were called conspiracy theorists and all that jazz? Well, now Haretz, which is pro-Israel, has finally admitted that the IDF ordered Hannibal directive on October 7th to prevent Hamas taking soldiers captive. Right there, folks. There was crazy hysteria and decisions started being made without verified information. Documents and testimonies obtained by Haaretz reveal the Hannibal Operation Order, which directs the use of force to prevent soldiers being taken into captivity, was employed at three army facilities infiltrated by Hamas, potentially endangering civilians as well. I lost a friend over this, fam. I lost a friend over this, over sharing this information, not from Haaretz, but from independent journalists after October 7th. I lost a friend over this. They told me I was following conspiracy stuff. This is the topic for the discussion that Aaron Mate, or more so the debate that Aaron Mate had on this panel on Pierce Morgan's show the Hannibal Directive. Because again, as much as I've said this before, as many times as Pierce Morgan tries to make excuses for Israel and their actions and their behavior, something else is always waiting in the wings to prove that Israel is purposefully killing these Palestinian people and that Israel has lied a number of times. Aaron Mate had to debate some crazy ass people. And I just call it like it is, the motherfuckers are crazy. And you guys know how, again, they'll interrupt and jump in when you start to tell facts. Let's start it off with this clip. Let's start it off with this. I think we'll do this and then we'll get into the rest of the debate. But this right here was fire. You're you a Russian settler, a, not American uh, settler. You're just stealing talking, Palestinian land. You're nothing I apologize. But a talking head on TV. Uh, you have nothing I, I, I to do retract. with this land. You have seller, nothing not to do with this seller. place. Keep saying Correct. it. Keep I have saying nothing it, to do with mass murder and apartheid. Go back to Canada yes, and correct. your little books behind you. You have nothing to do with this region. You don't speak the I languages book, of this yes. region. You're not from here. You never uh -huh. served here. I spoke to You're Arabs not from there today. Either. today. You're so it gets pretty heated there, which is something that they really don't want you to say, right? What Aaron said at the end, you're not from there either. Yeah, they don't want you to say that part. And he said, you're not from here either. No, a lot of them are settlers. Let's get into the full cusp of it. The first part that I want to focus on is this conversation, this debate that Aaron has with this gentleman here who's right next to Pierce. This guy, pay close attention to him. What a doozy. Is that many people have been challenging the number of those who died that day and were wounded uh, challenging the pretext that they were all killed or wounded by Hamas, and that actually uh, as a, a number, and no one's put an exact number to this, but a number of people on the Israeli side who died that day and were wounded were actually uh, killed or wounded by Israeli fire. And so the significance of this development about the Hannibal Directive, and it seems from what you're saying that you, you think it's highly likely it was deployed, is that it may be a number of Israelis were killed that way. Yeah, you know, Piers, it, it may, may be true, and it may have been in the chaotic situation on October the 7th when Palestinian death squads were roaming around southern Israel as they were finished raping and burning and pillaging, and as Palestinians were coming in. It may have happened that that order was given, but let's not go astray from what really happened on that day. The Here we go. 
first thing that I noticed out of this conversation, he's telling you that the Hannibal directive may have happened, but then he goes on to tell you, he said it may be true, but then he goes on to tell you, but let's pay attention to what really happened that day. So essentially he's telling you that it's not true. <laughs> I don't know if anyone caught that. <laughs> the overwhelming vast majority of Israelis, civilian and military, were executed in cold blood by Hamas murderers. And no BDS journalists and no uh, self-appointed Israel experts or uh, uh, self-hating Jews that we might hear from afterwards will ever be able to convince anybody that this wasn't Hamas's doing and that... So notice what he did there. He snuck that in. He called Aaron a self-hating Jew. So that's another thing that they'll do, right? Like that Zionists will do. If you don't agree with, with Zionism and if you don't agree with them killing Palestinian people and occupying those people and oppressing those people, you're a self-hater. A, a substantial amount of Israelis were killed by friendly fire and not by Hamas death squads. There okay. is overwhelming evidence, okay. visual evidence I understand, that, but, to but, the fact that this is that you Hamas must also, is doing. I understand. I'm, I'm going to go to Aaron Martin next, but just to be clear, um, Jonathan, I mean, the, the, the clear reality of what you've said is that if this directive was given, it must be very difficult to work out exactly how many people were killed and wounded by uh, Israeli forces or Hamas. I mean, how do, you, how do you know if a directive is given to open fire without constraints in order to prevent abduction? How do you know? Well, mm -hmm. that is something that they'll have to look into. And, you know, it took Israel with the world's most advanced uh, after action review and genetic um, uh, forensic uh, detailing with dentists etc and sifting through remains of charred bodies it took israel more than three months to actually establish uh, the amount of israelis killed and up until just a few weeks ago we were still getting reports of israelis uh, who were now confirmed dead and actually not taken hostage. That is the magnitude of the tremendous job here of understanding what happened on October the 7th. And of course, BDSers, Hamas apologists, Israel haters, and other Iranian uh, propagandists, they will go and they will pounce this with great joy, uh, as if to say, oh no, this wasn't the Hamas attack, this was Israel's doing, and Israelis killed themselves. Okay. I think that is utter nonsense. Okay. So let me just jump in here for a second. It's interesting that he wants to bring up forensics, the, all this forensics evidence that was done, but there didn't seem to be any forensics that was implemented to verify that sexual assault happened on October 7th. There was no forensics evidence for that. People just repeating that, no evidence whatsoever. No forensics evidence whatsoever. And people were just repeating it. But they had all this forensics, right? Let's bring in Aaron. Utter nonsense right. because this was a rampage I, by Hamas terrorists. No, I, which th that is, is inarguable. The question is exactly who was killed by who. Uh, Aaron Mate, you've been listening to this. You've actually been reporting about this Hannibal Directive, I believe, for, for quite some time. You know, hearing um, Jonathan Kamrikis, who was a former IDF uh, international spokesman and obviously was in the IDF, hearing him concede that this was highly likely to have happened. What, what is your reading of this? It did happen, that's been known for a very long time, from Israeli military sources and witnesses who reported seeing Israeli forces fire on them uh, on October 7th. The difference is that now, finally, an Israeli newspaper, Haaretz, has acknowledged this, and more Israeli military sources have come forward. The reporting from Haaretz says, according to one source, that the order was to turn the south of Israel, that frontier with Gaza, into a killing zone which is exactly what happened. It underscores that Israel has no concern for civilian life, not just inside Gaza, but also its own people, because it did not want to have Hamas take captives that could be used for negotiations to free Palestinian hostages. And that's been lost here. There are thousands of Palestinian hostages in Israeli dungeons. And a major goal of Hamas here was to take captives and use them as leverage to free Palestinians who have been in Israeli dungeons for years and years and years. Goal. Okay, so this is where this this is where the Zionists will come in and interrupt because Aaron was just 
admitting facts there. So they don't like when you start telling truth that they don't want other people to know about because the reality is everybody keeps talking about the Israeli hostages that uh, Hamas captured, but a lot of people are omitting that there are Palestinian hostages. CNN surprisingly ran a investigative report where they had discovered that Palestinian detention center. And I say discovered because other people knew about this, where they were torturing those people, where they were, you know, sexually assaulting Palestinian, uh, not just uh, uh, women, but women, men, and children, uh, even using dogs to assault them as well. So this is the information that Israel didn't want to get out. Israel doesn't want people to know that they have been torturing Palestinians, actually detaining them, and that these people are hostages because these people have not been found guilty in a court of law. They have just been grabbing Palestinian people off the street. It's, it's really scary because you know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of the South during, or actually before, the civil rights movement, where all it took was for a white woman to say that you looked at her or you whistled at her or you said hello to her for a black man to be just automatically guilty and tortured or even a black boy. That was Emmett Till. That's what it reminds me of. How they can just go take whoever they want, no court, no trial, and they've imprisoned these people. But he's going to interrupt because Aaron is starting to tell the truth. And they don't like that. Now, if you notice what I played you, did you see him interrupt him? No, Aaron did not interrupt him. But they always want to come interrupt you when you start telling people the truth about Israel. And, and excuse me, I didn't interrupt you. I, I did not interrupt you. I did not, inter I did, I did not interrupt you despite your many no, falsehoods. No, but what you're saying now, is disgusting. Point, excuse me, excuse you're me, I, I didn't interrupt you. You're whitewashing Hamas's murder. And, and you're whitewashing mass murder, which is the whole point of suppressing the truth about October 7th uh, since it happened. We have not heard Oh, this and I guess prominent. you are the bearer of truth? A Hamas apologist? You will tell viewers around okay. the world about truth? A, a propagandist for the, Hamas? Okay. Someone wanna, who spreads uh, falsehoods and lies yeah. about Hamas you, you, and apologizes for them for, and tries to whitewash Can you stop talking now? I didn't interrupt you. You're a propagandist hostage. for the Israeli military, which is a mass murdering entity. And the whole point of this October 7th propaganda and burying the truth that Israel killed its own people was to manufacture support. Have you ever for been in Israel, Aaron? Yes, have I have. Have you ever been in Israel? Yes, I've lived, yes, I've lived, yes, lived in Israel. You see the gaslighting that's going on. So this is what he's doing, right? So first, when you start to call out uh, Israel and what they've done to the Palestinian people, even prior, especially when you mentioned prior to October 7th, then it's all of a sudden, let's turn it back to Hamas. Now you're being an evil person because you're making excuses for what Hamas did. That's to take your attention away from what Israel did to those people. That's a trick. That's one gaslighting tactic. Obviously, Aaron doesn't fall for that. Then the next thing it is, have you been there? Have you been to Israel? How do you know? Have you been there? What do you know about the land? You're not one of us. You're not one of the people. What do you know? Just ways to try to make it seem like you're not credible so that people believe that Israel is on the right side. Yes, I've lived in Israel. Yes, have actually, you been have. in the kibbutzim after October the yes, 7th, I have. Aaron? Have no, you been I have here? Not. Have no, you I, seen no. the families? Okay. Have you met them? Can you stop deflecting? Have you met you the survivors? Have you met the hostage survivors? Can you stop survivors? deflecting interrupting? No, because I understand you, why you, you want to change the subject. You speak as if you have any authority on the matter. Okay, I speak as someone who's You speak as if you know anything. You speak as if you know Israeli civilians, as if you know what Hamas did on October the 7th. I understand your job as a propagandist for You haven't been here. You haven't watched Israeli civilians murdered by Hamas. I understand you're doing your job, but I'm asking you to shut up now because I didn't interrupt you. You're a problem. I never saw Aaron get this angry before ever. This was a first for me. Up again is for well, mass murder, which is why you're trying tomorrow, to shut me up. Still just a in October, petty excuse Hamas me. Apologies. Stop talking. I didn't interrupt you. I, I let you spew no, on I, for minutes. I did not interrupt you. Now, the reason why you went interrupt me is because I'm acknowledging the facts, which is that Israel did kill its own people on October 7th and hid that truth to manufacture support for its own mass murder campaign inside of Gaza, which has killed tens of thousands of people. That's the atrocity unfolding before oh, our eyes Aaron, right Aaron, now. Aaron, let me jump in That's here because, Aaron, let me ask you. 
I mean, it is quite clear from their own admission through the way they were live streaming a lot of the barbaric acts they were committing that Hamas murdered many, many, many people that day. You presumably accept that. And this is what I don't uh, like what Pierce does here, because, again, he is supposed to be the moderator. He's not supposed to participate in the discussion as if he's on one side or the other. Also notice he's not doing his job as a moderator by preventing the interruptions. When someone starts to interrupt as a moderator, you're supposed to go, OK, stop. Let so and so finish saying what they're saying. Right. So, like I said before, he keeps continuing to say that he feels, oh, I'm not pro one side or the other, but he is. He's pro Israel and that's his job. It's his job to be pro Israel. So and now he comes in and he tries to bring it back to let's focus on Hamas. That's his job. What people have to understand as entertaining as some of these debates can be, you have to fully understand you got to follow the money. And when you follow the money, you'll understand that Pierce Morgan is doing this because this is what he is paid to do. He is paid to be pro Israel. He is paid to shut down any type of uh, radical thoughts. He is paid to allow the voices to come on, the Zionist voices to over talk and interrupt people. Always pay attention to that. That is what he's paid to do. Never forget that. There certainly were atrocities on October 7th. Yes. Right. I mean, how many people do you believe Hamas killed? And wounded. Well, the point is, there should have been an independent investigation of this from the start, which well, Israel I'm has. Sure, I'm so sure we because I'm, listen, sure, I'm just think asking about logically, you. Excuse me. You're here, a journalist. Here, here. You're a You'll have seen all the same stuff as me, right? You'll have seen Hamas terrorists openly boasting about the horrors they were committing. It, it is. It seems to me that it is indisputable that the vast majority of people who were killed that day were killed by. Hamas. Now, what is significant? No, not, no, what is significant to me is the revelation that this Hannibal directive was issued means that there was clearly some people on the Israeli side who were killed by Israeli forces as part of this open fire without constraints, even if it imperils the lives of Israelis. I don't think we know yet what the split is in terms of numbers, but I think to try and pretend, I mean, you accuse uh, Jonathan. Uh, can Rick is of deflecting, but to try and pretend that the vast majority of people who were killed and wounded that day were not killed and wounded by Hamas would also be a deflection of the truth, wouldn't it? Well, no, because Aaron was speaking and Jonathan interrupted him. If he wouldn't have interrupted him, then Aaron could have finished what he was saying. And we probably could have gotten around to that point, but he interrupted him to try to throw him off on purpose. This is another thing that they do, just another piece of propaganda, right? To try to get you to focus. And he brought up a different issue. That's not what Aaron was talking about at that time. So yes, he was deflecting. But again, you see what Pierce is paid to do. I'm surprised. I have to say this, folks. I'm surprised when I saw this come across my Twitter feed, I was shocked that Pierce Morgan even allowed Aaron Monte to come on because I told you guys, I said, I don't think he would bring on someone like the gray zone, right? Because they have been to Israel and they are Jewish and they're anti-Zionist. So I was like, I don't think he would bring them on. Max Blumenthal has written a book about this. So I will say that I was wrong. He did bring them on. But this whole panel thing that's happening here is too many damn people. So that's another thing, Pierce. You got too many damn people on this panel. If you're going to do these debates. These debates need to be just two people and you're supposed to be the moderator in the middle. Not taking one side or the other. All these damn people in here, there's too many damn people. Just keeping it real. It would be a deflection of the truth to insist without evidence that the vast majority of people were killed by Hamas. We don't know because there has not been a credible independent investigation, which Israel obviously wants to stop. Now, think of it logically here. Certainly, yes, Palestinian militants committed atrocities on October 7th. But think of it logically. If now you have confirmation from Israeli newspaper and Israeli military sources that a directive was issued, to turn that area into a killing zone and to achieve that goal of preventing anyone that from crossing back into said. Gaza. Excuse that me. That's said. exactly what Howard to I didn't interrupt you. I'm going to finish my sentence. No, that is not what direct, was Excuse said. me. It if that directed, if, if that, that's no. exactly what 
This is where Pierce as should be jumping in as the host of the show and should be shutting down the interruption, but he's not doing that. And again, that is on purpose. Notice what I said, another playbook. This is what they do. As soon as you start to tell facts about Israel that they don't really want people to know or to get out, they come in and they interrupt you. Again, no one interrupted this dude. Okay. It says, no? it says in Haaretz, excuse me. That's what it says. I'll post it online afterwards. Well, People the fact check that it says so in Haaretz okay, excuse me. make it true. I, and if you're citing okay, that's source, what it is. please be specific. And it's a matter yeah, I did. of real consequences. I did, I did. and you're lying about my source. The directive the Israeli, was to turn it I'm into quoting an Israeli military isn't cor source. Isn't correct. All right, well, hang on. Okay, hang on, hang on, source. hang on, please. He's interrupting about When you talk over each other, it's very hard to keep up with it. Let me bring in Gideon. Yeah, but now you come in. So you guys see what Pierce is doing now. Pierce Morgan comes in and he says, you guys are talking over each other, but he doesn't let Aaron finish what he was saying. And that's on purpose. So, right. Right. I've never seen Aaron this heated. So that's why I was just like, oh, I was like, wow, Aaron came in hot because he was pissed and rightfully so. So they bring in this guy. Let me fast forward. Sorry. I'm just going to speed up a little bit. Because there were certain parts here that I wanted to go to. Do, do, do. Because like I said, they, they cut in. We're going to go back to that guy who claims that he's indigenous to the land. <laughs> we're going to go back to that guy. Sorry, guys. It's just my... I think I'm going to the right spot. Oh, here we go. All righty. Sorry. Sorry. Bad guys. And there are many examples of people around here who push back on the bad guys, some successfully, some less successfully. The Kurds, our Muslim allies, have successfully pushed back on the Iranian jihadists, the Turkish, uh, the, the Iraqi, all the folks that hate them. And that's why we're allied. People like us, ethnic minorities in this region that are armed, survive because we're able to push back on the jihad. And the fact that you think that there's no other minorities that are like us is, is just is just laughable. Uh, we are we are. A okay. Small people in a small land. All right, you made the point. Push me, back hard. You made the oh, point. Yeah. Let, me, let me ask you this question: Small people in a small land, but you're going to push back hard. Question. Yeah, hang on, hang on, please. I've got a question for the. I have a question for the rabbi. Go ahead. I have a question, Thank you, sir. and it's this: yes, sir. Why has there been a spike now in new settlements on the West Bank, including retroactively authorizing three outposts? How can that do anything? but massively inflame the already extremely tense uh, atmosphere around the West Bank. Uh, hello? Right? Because as we've said multiple times, Hamas is not in the West Bank. So miss me with all that Israel has a right to defend itself, bish. Because the people in the West Bank, this is a totally different thing. But you want to annex the in, in, in its entirety. They don't say, well, we have the right to defend ourselves and this to protect ourselves. No, nah, fuck that. Anybody can use that excuse. White supremacists use that excuse in this country and said, well, we want to protect ourselves. We're afraid of the black people. So that's why. So miss all that. That's just another thing that shows you this is another form of supremacy. Never forget that. And how is this defensible? It's 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 not only is it defensible, it's the only way forward. The only way forward is for the Jewish people to live in their land, to push back on the Palestinian Authority and the Hamas and those entities to assert sovereignty. Their land. Everybody hear this? Their land. The land is uh, uh, rightfully apparently theirs, even though other people are already there on the damn land. They want to get rid of the Palestinian people in the West Bank. He said their land. So do you hear the rhetoric that's coming out of his mouth? He's already telling you that the land belongs to Israel. It doesn't belong to the Palestinian people. How in the world can people just sit there and not even push back on that rhetoric? Pierce Morgan sitting right there and this man is telling you his whole intentions with his whole damn chest. He said that with his whole chest, letting you know that the land is theirs and that they need that land. So how can you defend Israel any more beyond this point? There's no Hamas in the West Bank. These people are not trying to kill you. These people are not coming after you. They're under apartheid. They can't even walk on the same street as you. They're the ones that are in power. 
Palestinian people have no power. If anything, they should be afraid of you. So hold on. I'm not American. I was born in Israel. My parents were Russian refuseniks. Read the freaking Wikipedia. For God's sakes, I served in the army here. Too, and I just came, hey, came back to you're, the reserves Russian, right now. Please do me, settler, do me a favor. Do me a favor. I was born you're in Russian Haifa. I speak Hebrew American and English. Settler. You are a Canadian from myself. nowhere. You yeah. have nothing to you're, do with you're anything. Russian, you know I apologize. You're, you're a Russian are settler, just a, not American settler. You're just stealing a talking, Palestinian land. He said you're a Russian settler stealing Palestinian land. <laughs> I told you, this is why they don't allow DNA tests in Israel because they don't want you to see that a lot of the people are not from there. They're not from there. A lot of them from Russia, Poland, Poland, Ukraine. Benjamin Netanyahu is from Poland. They're not from there. In other words, you're a motherfucking poser. That's what you are, a poser. Mm, mm, mm. You're nothing I apologize. but a talking head on TV. You have nothing I, 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 I to do with this land. You have seller, nothing not to do with this seller. place. You keep saying Correct. it. Keep I have nothing to do it, with mass you, murder and Go apartheid. back to yes, Canada correct. and your little books behind you. You have nothing to do with this region. You don't speak the I languages of this yes. region. You're not from here. You never uh -huh. served here. I spoke to You're Arabs not from there today. Either. See how quickly he was able to just say it? Go back to Canada, he says, with your little books. You're not from here. Now, this goes to show you again. What is this really about? Because Aaron is Jewish, but Aaron's not a Zionist. This is where you get to debunk the whole, this is just about religion. This is just about Judaism. No, it's not just about that. This was always the plan. The plan of Zionism. This. Why do you guys think Facebook, look, Facebook just announced, okay? Saw this earlier today. Facebook just announced that now... It is not going to be fair for you, I guess, to use the word Zionist on Facebook. What is happening here, fams? What, what the what? Now you can't use the word Zionist on Facebook. Pretty sure that's going to backfire. You're I not am from, from here. Either. I was born in Haifa, Israel. My parents are uh -huh. my parents fought to get, come to this They're land from, Russia, uh, from the yeah. Russian Soviet regime. And you are just yeah. a Canadian citizen. They're from Russia. <laughs> Let's call up Putin. Come get your boy. Putin, come get your dude. <laughs> Sitting out there sniping with your little understandings of things. Go back and read. We have a lot more common ethnically else. than you do Please with anybody from that do land. Do me a favor. I am Eastern an European ethnic Jews. Jewish person, which is a Judean from okay, this land. Listen, we I have the same DNA on. as listen, the Arabs. Look, almost the same, same right, language. Fascinating though it is where you both yeah, come from. You're the Hang same on. DNA. As the, okay. Look, I, you're from, your DNA is from Russia. <laughs> he just told you his parents are from Russia. Russia. Is. Can we get back to the, the question? Way, Rab Pierce, Rabbi today, Fleischer, today, I want I you to justify the expansion of the Arabs settlement. Today at a well, at how, a do you, spring how do you justify talking about the future? This guy, he's in Canada. Rabbi Fleischer, and stuff. if you may. Yeah. You how do you justify so see how this guy just continues to talk on Aaron had a well at Hebron. Hang on, were please. Can I talk, please? Destroying it, which is what Israel does. Right, um, yes, please, sir. let it go. Yes, sir. Rabbi Fleischer, how do you justify the expansion of settlements at this particular time all I, I over the I West. I justify Bank. it. I laud it. I, I'm proud of it. I can't. I can't. I can't. I'm. I can't be prouder about this government. And finally, we are uh, resettling our land, our small land that pushes back against jihadism. This is a. This is correct in terms of security. It's correct in terms of pushing back on jihad. It is also our legal land that we purchased. That we. That we won in wars. That. No, it is not. Because again, under international law, the settlements are illegal. And he's sitting here saying that it's legal. It's not legal. This guy is a fucking liar. And honestly, it, I'm just sitting here and I'm thinking to myself, like, no way I could have been sitting there. Because if you look at Aaron's face, Aaron has this look on his face like that motherfucker. You know what I mean? Just that kind of thing. But this guy blatantly just told you he's proud of the expansion of the settlements. He's proud of that. He's proud of Israel trying to annex the entire part of the West Bank. He's totally proud of that. Does everybody hear what he just said? Does everybody hear that?
because that is proof once again that this is not about defense. This is not about Hamas. This is about ethnically cleansing the fucking land. Now this guy sits right on your show and he says this to you, to the entire audience. He don't give a damn. And he's supposed to get some kind of pass because he's a rabbi. That's supremacy at its finest. He just told you he let the cat out the bag. This is our ancestral land. You dig in the dirt and that's where our history is. Let me ask the same question. Let me ask the same question. Wait a minute, Pierce. Hold on. Hold on. This is the important point. The, you asked about the future of Gaza. Future of Gaza is the same. Israel is going to govern Gaza. Israel is going to govern it first militarily, then it's going to resettle it. Decent Arabs who are post-jihad, anti-jihad. Who? Did you hear what he just said? Resettle Gaza. If this isn't the mask off moment, I don't know what else to tell people who are still sitting up here defending Israel who are defending Netanyahu and they're letting that psycho come speak to Congress, Netanyahu. I don't know what else to say to people because he's telling you right here, this is a big mask off moment. I'm surprised Pierce Morgan actually posted this video. Wonder how long this will last, but that's the reality. They're going to resettle. Netanyahu said they have no intention of resettling. I told you Netanyahu was lying and to my friend, who said that I was lying and that I was a conspiracy, conspiracy theorist or whatever. Maybe you wake up now. It is very obvious to anyone who knew the history, who read up on it and did their research. You can't blame everything on Hamas. Not everything that happened is because of Hamas. We'll go on a little bit more here. Who are pro-Israel and want, to, want an upward mobility in life. They're going to become residents of this land. They're going to have a, have a, have a future, not under jihad, but under normalization. And, and the Jewish people are going to live in our tiny land, especially in Judea and Samaria, the so-called West Bank. So do you see what's happening? He just told you that they're going to pick out the type of Arab people that they want to live there. How is this right they get to decide who gets to live there and who doesn't. The good ones, as he put it. This is what the U.S. government supports. Okay, Jonathan. In short, he's saying we can steal Palestinian land because God promised it it's to us. It's not Palestinian land. Saying. It's yeah. our land. You just don't know your uh -huh. history. I, I'm yeah. actually curious. Yeah. What, I'm, I'm curious what Jonathan Conricus thinks of that, what you've just heard. Do you agree with him? Well, I think, yeah, I think that, you know, I want to connect what, first of all, I think it's very interesting that we are four men. I think all of us probably born Jewish, if I read the Wikipedia's right, and with quite a diversity of views on topic. Two of, three of us live here, one doesn't, but we have very strong views on this topic. And I think it's interesting, the day appears that you will have four Muslim guys, two of them speaking positively about Israel and two of them speaking on behalf of Palestinians, then I will know that we have made tremendous strides forward. Until then, it'll be a lot of infighting here. Regarding what you... Let me pause there and we'll stop it there because we do. I do want to do the call-in segment as well. First of all, Pierce Morgan has had Muslim uh, guests on the show that are anti-Palestinian. So that goes to tell you how much Jonathan has researched. But that is, it's absolutely disgusting and appalling. This guy sat up there and told you his parents are from Russia. His parents aren't even from there. That go to tell you, you talk about generations when people say first generation, second generation, third generation. His parents, not grandparents, parents are from Russia. He's Russian. Putin, come get your dude. Putin, come get your dude.